First of all, the answer is no. You do not get free updates like you all bragged that you could with Affinity programs. Like everyone was like, oh my God, it's so much better because I get free updates and I pay one time fee and I get access for life. That is kind of true, but not really. So I bet a lot of you were fooled. You bought Affinity, which has like three versions that kind of mimic what Adobe does, but the difference is the payments, right? So Adobe, you it's a subscription and you pay, you know, whether you pay $20.99 per month for Adobe InDesign, or you pay $9.99 per month for Photoshop, or you pay the whole amount, I think it's like $49.99 for Creative Cloud, then you were like, okay, I get it. I get upgrades, but I have to pay a month it's so much. So when Affinity came out, they had three products. They had Photo, Designer, and Publisher, which were supposed to mimic Adobe InDesign and Adobe Photoshop. And so you paid a one-time fee and everyone was like, oh my God, this is so awesome because I get access to free updates. That is not true. <laughs> you get access to like minor bug fixes that they have. They just came out with Affinity 2.0 and not only is there not a an upgrade fee, you just have to buy it over all over again. Like you're buying it from scratch. So it doesn't matter that you bought 1.0. You can just kiss that money goodbye because that, yes, technically you still have access to 1.0, but when they come out with something new, who really wants access to that? And the second thing is, Affinity came out with Affinity Publisher for the iPad, which I think is actually very exciting. So we're gonna try Affinity Publisher for the iPad in a separate video, but just wanna clarify the costs, like, you must pay to buy Affinity 2.0 all over again from scratch like you're a new person. Now, this week is not too bad because it is Black Friday week and they have 40% off. So if you were thinking about doing an upgrade, I would do it now. If you're wondering what's in there, like is it worth it? Like what am I really getting? If you head over here to their website, you're gonna see that they have videos for each of these. Now, I'm not too worried about photo because I never use it, but over here you can see for Affinity Publisher, which is the one that is like Adobe InDesign, they added actually a lot of new things. They have a new user interface, a style picker, auto flow, quick grid, they have notes. Um, this is really more important if you're it, like doing a dissertation. Um, they have a books panel, placing and editing DWG files. I don't even know what that is, so I don't even know if I care. Uh, linked layer visibility override. Don't really know what that is, but I do use layers a lot. URL linked resources. That's very important. Converting frame text to artistic text. That sounds like something cool you wouldn't want to miss out on. Select same. It doesn't really look like it's important. Definitely could care less about the word counter. Um, overwriting existing package files. Sure. Why not? I mean, that seems like something that should have been in 1.0, but all right, and then as far as Affinity Designer, which is like their Photoshop, uh, same thing, new interface, shape builder tool, vector wrap. I don't know what TWG <laughs> files are. Maybe I should learn what that is. Um, the knife and scissor tool, again, that feels like something that should have been there in the first place. Area measure scale tools. Uh, I don't know how really important that is. Uh, quick grid and style picker tool. That does sound like something that would be useful and honestly should have been in 1.0. So should you upgrade? I'm not really sure. So the upgrade, uh, just so you know, is not cheap. Um, it is, and it's not even an upgrade. I keep saying that, that is 100% false. It is you just buying everything from scratch. So I would only purchase, they do have this combo where you can get all three. Again, I would never use photo. Um, and honestly, I probably wouldn't even use designer. So publisher two, I would definitely use because that is like in design. So I'm going to buy that. Um, and then I'm also going to purchase the in design um, for iPad. So this is separate. So we're gonna go through this in a different video, uh, but this is $11.99. And again, it's just a one-time payment and it is 40% off because of Black Friday. So if you're gonna buy any of these, like anything at all, I would 100% make sure to buy it and make sure you buy it for the right operating system. So that's kind of a wrap on everything Affinity to give you an up-to-date overview on what I think. Should you upgrade? Yes. Should you purchase um, the upgrade thinking you're gonna get updates for the future? No, that is not true. Whenever they come out with Affinity 3.0, you will have to buy it all over again from scratch. So when that happens, I will have another video. We'll walk through whether or not it's worth it. And I hope everyone's having a fabulous and wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next video where we will go over whether or not Adobe, or not Adobe, Affinity Publisher for the iPad, which again, Adobe does not have a competitor version, 
is worth it and can it really do anything? Really important, the version, this version of Affinity is not forwards compatible or is the term backwards compatible? I think it's forwards compatible. So for example, I only upgraded Affinity Publisher, but I didn't upgrade Adobe or Affinity Designer, which is the Photoshop version. So what happens is every time I go to open a document that somebody who has the new version, um, I will get this message. Failed to open document, this file includes features from a later version of Affinity. You say okay, nothing happens, it fails to open it. It will never ever in the history of time ever open that file for you, you will never be able to use it. So something really important if you are planning not to do the upgrade is you're gonna have um, version control issues with being able to share files between the two.